chapter 5 understanding the human being as coexistence of self and the body recap in previous chapters we have discussed the basic aspiration of human being that is happiness prosperity and its continuity happiness is to be in harmony and the program for continuous happiness is to live in the in harmony at all levels of being from individual human being to family to society and to nature existence it is essential to understand the harmony at all these levels of being in order to live in harmony to be in harmony or to be in a state of continuous happiness as we go ahead we want you to explore the nature of harmony at all these levels one by one proposals will be put forward to you about the harmony at each of these levels you are requested to verify them one by one on your own right first to verify them on the basis of your own natural acceptance and then validate them further in living experiential validation to see if it leads to mutual happiness and mutual prosperity or not our role is to draw your attention towards the pro- proposals and help in initiating this process of self verification in you hence the main responsibility is yours in this chapter we will begin to explore the harmony in human being human being what do you visualize when you read the word human being you may imagine a human body with its familiar form and features have you also thought about who is visualizing the human being who is appreciating the form and features is a human being just the body or something more than that we want to explore exactly what a human being is human being as coexistence of self and body the proposal is that human being is the coexistence of self and body let's try to observe it in ourselves now refer to this figure 51 who is interested in understanding what is written in this book who makes sense of the words we keep saying things like i am happy i feel bored this is my friend that is a stranger i like this music i want to eat delicious food and so on like that we have an idea that i am there and my body is also there we can see that it is the body that is tall or short fat or thin healthy or sick and so on we also have an idea about ourselves like uh, this i is referring to the self not the body you self you are the one that recognizes the relationship that decides what to do and that feels happy or sad when we say i ate delicious food we can see that the food is consumed by the body and i enjoy the taste of the food the needs of the self and the body if you try to understand self and body separately it could be understood on the basis of need a need of the self is happiness if someone expresses a feeling of respect to us 
we feel happy about it. Respect is one of the needs of the self. Now, if you look at the need of the body, it is physical facility. One example of it is food. You may observe it in yourself that food is required and respect is also required. None of these are required. Now, both of these are required for human being. Do you think one can be replaced by the other? For example, if you are given well-prepared tasty food, but it is given to you with a push or a sharp, here, take it and eat. Will it work for you? Providing tasty food may fulfill the body, but the disrespect will not be satisfying for the self. Similarly, if you are given respect but no food, you may tolerate it for for a day or two. However, you certainly need food also, isn't it? Thus, both of these are required. By giving food only, you can't ensure respect. Same way, just by giving respect, food is not ensured. As these are two different types of needs, both of these are essential and therefore, both of them have to be fulfilled separately for human being. Needs, are they temporary or continuous? To clarify the difference between the two types of needs, let us look at them in terms of time. The food is required continuously or you need it only when you feel hungry. When your stomach is full, do you still require food? It is easy to see that food is needed only when we are hungry. If we are forced to eat when the stomach is full, we find it uncomfortable, rather intolerable. Thus, food is needed from time to time and not continuously. Therefore, food is required temporarily. What about respect? Is it desired continuously or only for a certain time? It is also easy to see that we desire respect all the time. You can notice that if a friend wishes you every morning but does not wish you one day, how you feel? Comfortable or uncomfortable? For this, if you conclude that there is a break in this feeling of respect for you, you feel uncomfortable, isn't it? One of our friends came to visit with his 10-year-old daughter. A conversation was taking place. At one point, someone asked her, Does your father love you? She was silent for a minute, uh, for a few minutes. A person asked, does he not love you? Uh, she looked at him and said, uh, he loves me, but why does he shout at me and beat me? Taken aback, the friend defended himself by saying, I have scolded you few times, but I haven't beaten you, have I? Her response was, Remember the night before Diwali two years ago? Since feeling is needed in continuity, even a small gap is not acceptable. A child remembers these few gaps over such a long time. The need of food is temporary. If someone forces you to eat continuously, 
we feel uncomfortable about it. But imagine if you went to a friend's house and he served delicious food. You ate with enthusiasm because it was your favorite food. Now what would happen if your friend kept insisting to you to eat more and more even after your stomach is full? In case of respect we want continuity but in case of food we don't want the continuity hence both the needs are different with respect to time can you observe this like that explore all your needs all the needs related to the self like the need for respect the need for trust the need for relationship the need for happiness all these are continuous in time we don't want any kind of break in it even for a moment on the other hand all the needs related to the body like the need for the food need for shelter all these are required for a limited time having them in continuity creates a problem for us this is one way we can differentiate the need of the self and the need of the body needs quantity and quality the other way to see the difference between the two is in terms of quantity and quality the need for food is quantitative in nature we can identify the quantity of food needed to nurture our body same is the case with the need of clothes shelter etc none of us can eat unlimited food amount of food or wear unlimited amount of clothes we can always identify the quantity of clothes needed to prepare a dress like that any physical facility is required in a limited quantity you can observe it in yourself whether you need physical facility in a limited quantity or unlimited quantity on the other hand the feeling of respect trust etc is not quantitative we don't say today i have half i got half kg of respect or 2 meters of trust even speaking like this appears laughable these feelings are qualitative in nature we can't talk about their quantity we can only say whether these feelings are there or not there they are qualitative there are they are in the form of a feeling either this feeling is there or not there measure of quantity does not apply to it with these two differences we can see that the need of physical facility the need for happiness are two different types of needs the need for physical facility relates to the body and the need for happiness relates to the self refer to exercise number 2 placed in practice exercises for self exploration at the end of this chapter through it you can explore further explore the needs of the self and the needs of the body please do that exercise now before moving ahead could you see that the needs of the self and the needs of the body are of two different types fulfillment of the needs of the self and the body now let us see how these two different types of needs are fulfilled refer to figure 53 the need for food is fulfilled by something physical like rice and vegetables or sa- a sandwich you may say that is obvious because it really is but when it comes to the need of the respect it is fulfilled by the feeling of respect 
you may want your friends to pay attention to you to listen to what you say without interrupting you and even to appreciate what you say isn't it these are few expressions of the expectation of right feeling from which you conclude that your friends respect you you can find out if your need for food will be fulfilled if your friends keep saying nice things about you but they don't offer you anything to eat all day it is quite obvious that some food is required to fulfill the need of the body similarly you can find out if your need for a respect will be fulfilled if your friends keep on feeding you with the best of foods but keep making fun of you all day can you see that these are two different needs and one cannot be substituted for the other all the needs related to the body which are in terms of physical facility are fulfilled by some physiochemical things all the needs related to the self are in terms of feeling and they are fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling we discussed this in chapter 3 also while talking about basic human aspiration we saw that three things are required for a human being to be fulfilled one right understanding in the self two fulfillment in a relationship with human being three physical facility with the rest of the nature refer to figure 54 the physical facility has to do with the needs of the body the right understanding and right feeling have to do with the needs of the self for human being in addition to the body the self has become prominent thus the need of the self has become significant hence feelings like trust respect etc have become a higher priority compared to the physical facility to be fulfilled over and above physical facility human being needs right understanding and right feeling which are the needs related to the self the need of the self is happiness while the need of the body is physical facility the need for happiness is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling whereas the need for physical facility is fulfilled by physiochemical things both of these needs have to be fulfilled separately because the two are of different types for human beings to be fulfilled both the needs have to be taken care of what do you think are both the self and the body important or you can do away with any one of them are we taking care of both or are we largely focused on the body only most parents sincerely want to take care of the child to the best extent possible what many of them end up doing is largely taking care of the needs of the body and almost ignoring the self for example a mother may try to overfeed the child and if the child resists she may shout at or even beat the child in the process the self is getting violated though the body is getting fed if we observe our day to day living we are largely focused on the needs relating to the body needs of the self are definite of course the needs related to the body depending depend on the age health condition shape and size of the body etc an adult may need 1 kg of food in a day while a small child may need 100 grams 
A tall young man may need 3 meters of cloth for a pant while a short boy may need only 1 meter of cloth. Like that the needs related to the body will vary. On the other hand the needs of the self are definite. A child needs happiness as much as youth does as an old person. In other words, this right understanding and right feeling is the need of any self and every self regardless of the state and condition of the body. Can you see that? The activities of the self and the body. When we look deeper into human being, we can look at it in terms of the activities going on, referred to figure 5.5. Five. The self has the activity of desire, thought and expectation. Observe within yourself whether these activities are going on in you or not. What do you see? Are these the activities of the self? or the body? Is this activity of desire and thought continuous or temporary in time? Just start observing whether these activities are going on continuously in you or only for some time. Try to stop your thought. What do you find? Does it stop? Is it possible to stop the activity of desire, activity of thought? You will find that the activity of the self is continuous in time. We cannot stop it. On the other hand, any work that we take from the body, like eating, walking, etc., is temporary in time. After some time, the body gets tired and we need to give it rest. We cannot make it continuous. Thus, when it comes to performing an activity with the help of the body, we can't do it continuously. On the contrary, any activity of the self is continuous. We can't stop it while, even for a while. When we are bored of thinking about one thing, we start thinking of something else. But one or the other desire, thoughts, keep going on continuously in us. Any activity with the help of the body is difficult to continue, while any activity of the self is difficult to stop. Can you observe this difference? Refer to exercise number three, placed in practice session for self-exploration at the end of this chapter. Through it, you can further explore the activities of the self and the activities of the body. Please do that exercise now before reading further. Could you see that these activities are qualitatively of two different types? The self and the body can be differentiated on the basis of their needs as well as their activities. The third difference is at the level of the response. The response of the body and the response of the self. The response of the self and the body. The response of the body is based on recognizing and fulfilling, whereas the response of the self is based on knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. See figure 5-6. Let's take an example to clarify it. If someone is piercing a needle in your body, the body has a definite recognition and fulfillment. If the needle is harder than the skin of the body, it will go inside. If it is softer than the skin, it will not go inside. This recognition and fulfillment of the body with the needle is definite. Now let's look at the response of the self. If someone is piercing a needle in your body, will you, will we cooperate with him or oppose him? 
that depends upon the situation and our assumption about that person. If the person piercing the needle is a doctor, we cooperate. On the other hand, if the, the person is an enemy trying to inject poison in the body, we will oppose them. It means that the recognition and fulfillment of the self depends upon the assumption in the self. Can you observe that your response to the other person depends upon your assumption? Any small difference in the assumption leads to different recognition and fulfillment. Let's take another example. You are lying on the operation table for some surgery. The doctor is ready to perform the job. Just before, before the anesthesia, a close friend makes a phone call to you and informs you that this doctor is hand in hand with your enemy. What would you do? Will you continue with operation or jump out of the table? Obviously, the second one. Why? Because of the information you received via the phone call. Now, your assumption about the doctor has changed. Obviously, no other physical change outside has taken place. The table, the room, and the people, everything is same. But your assumption about the doctor has changed. So, it is followed by a change in recognition and fulfillment. Earlier, you were ready to pay for the operation and now you won't allow him to operate even if uh, you are paid for it. The recognition and fulfillment of the body will be the same in both the cases. However, the recognition and fulfillment of the self depends upon the assumption. Since assumption keeps changing based on the influence of circumstances, peer pressure, society, media, etc., our recognition and fulfillment, our conduct also keeps varying throughout the day. That is the source of indefinite conduct of a human being. All the problems that we see around ultimately relates to this. With this background, if you observe people around you, they have various assumptions in themselves, many a times not based on right understanding, but influenced by the sensation, media, advertisement, preconditioning, prevailing in the society, etc. Due to differences in assumption, their recognition and fulfillment is different. Hence, there is a lot of difference in the conduct of various people. Not only that, even a single person may have many different set of assumptions. When one set of assumption is active, his conduct is one way. When another set of assumption is active, the conduct is different. You may find the same person full of affection one time and full of jealousy at another time. We also may have various assumptions in us. Sometimes these assumptions may even be contrary to each other and depend upon the time, situation and circumstance. One of them may become active. But this makes our behavior much more complicated. Any misleading assumption that is not right leads to a wrong recognition and fulfillment, ultimately leading to wrong behavior, conduct. This is what most of us are doing, living on the basis of assumption. As a result, all of us are facing problems at various levels. If we assume uh, ourselves to be one sect and someone assume the other sect to be our opponent, our behavior with the people of these two sects can be quite different. If, like if a person believes themselves to be of one 
sect and he has the assumption that those who believe themselves to be of another sect are different from him this behavior will be very different for people of both these sects however when he is able to understand human being this assumption will be set right and his behavior will be mutually fulfilling for any human being and every human being can you see that the conduct of the human being basically depends upon the response of the self as all decisions are made by the self only with the assumptions set right that is assumptions that are based on knowing can the recognition and fulfillment be set right and only then can the conduct become definite this has been elaborated in the figure 57 as long as we are just operating in the smaller block assuming recognizing fulfilling fulfilling we are in problem our conduct is indefinite as our assumptions keep changing the solution is to operate in a bigger block knowing assuming recognizing fulfilling the shift from operating only on the basis of human Uh, assuming without knowing to operating on the basis of knowing is facilitated by human education sanskar knowing means understanding the reality as it is in its completeness since the reality is definite knowing is also definite with right understanding our assumptions basically our acceptances is set right our recognition of relationship is set right and therefore we make efforts to fulfill the relationship in this way our conduct becomes definite it becomes humane so we are calling it definite human conduct if we understand know the human being as proposed above our assumptions will be set right we will be able to see that all human beings are similar our recognition of relationship will be set right we will recognize all human beings as being similar rather than a, a, on the basis of caste creed gender age language religion etc region etc with the recognition set right our fulfillment of relationship will be set right we will make the effort for fulfillment of both the self as well as the body rather than discriminating based on whether one is a male or female white or black hindu or christian etc to live in a state of solution we need to ensure knowing in the self which is the most important task for human being in absence of knowing when we are living just by assumptions we are in problem and creating problem for others can you see that this transformation from the state of problem or indefinite conduct to the state of solution or definite conduct can be ensured by human education sanskar the self as the consciousness entity the body as the material entity we saw that the need fulfillment activity and the response of self and body are completely different there are two different types of reality the self which is also called as jivan is the domain of consciousness while the body is the domain of material as shown in the figure 58 the domain of consciousness is characterized by the activity of knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling on the other hand the domain of material only has the activity of recognizing and fulfilling happiness is the need of the consciousness and it is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling 
which are activities of the consciousness itself. Body is a material unit and its needs are material in nature and they are fulfilled by physiochemical things. Thus the need of the consciousness is fulfilled by the activities of consciousness only whereas the need of the material body is fulfilled by physiochemical things only. To understand the human being, both the domain of consciousness as well as the domain of material needs to be understood. For human being to be fulfilled, both domains need to be fulfilled separately. Gross misunderstanding assuming the human being to be only the body. A gross misunderstanding is to assume the human being to be just the body. As far as the needs of human being are concerned, they are in terms of happiness and physical facility. The need for happiness is continuous because it is actually the need of the self. With the assumption that the human being is just the body, all the efforts for fulfillment of human needs have to take place through physical facility. We are actually trying to fulfill the needs of the self through the body, through physical facility. Of course, we are also trying to fulfill the needs of the body through physical facility. We are trying to fulfill the continuous need for happiness like respect through physical facility like clothes and food. Since the need for happiness is continuous, we end up th thinking that it will come from more clothes, more food, etc. Hence the need for clothes, food and any other physical facility appears to be undefined or unlimited in quantity. This is articulated in figure 5.9. For instance, you can observe people who are trying to get respect out of clothes. They keep on buying and wearing new clothes just to draw attention towards themselves. Do you think that this attention is same as respect? Is it possible to get respect based on the clothes you wear? What about continuity of respect on this basis? Certainly it does not work. The impact of this assumption is that we keep accumulating more and more physical facility without knowing how much is enough, how much will fetch us continuous happiness. We never feel prosperous. We feel deprived, so we try to accumulate more. That is how we get into a loop. Check if you are also caught in this loop. The gross misunderstanding is assuming the human being to be the body and therefore trying to fulfill all the needs through physical facility alone. It is needless to say that there are wide repercussions at every level of human existence. On the one hand, there is exploitation of natural resources for more and more physical facility. On the other hand, Human beings are exploited in the process and also they are made to compete for the limited physical facility. The self is central to the human being. If we now look at human being, the self, which is the consciousness, is there, the body, the material is there and the two coexist. Further, it is a self that has the need to know and the possibility to know the reality. It is the knower or seer. The self gives instructions to the body when the body needs to be involved and it reads the sensations from the body. See figure 10, 510. In that sense, the self decides what to do. It is the doer. It is the self which experiences happiness or unhappiness. It is the enjoyer which is the experiencer. In this way we can see that the self is central to human existence. 
the body is used as an instrument in chapter 6 we will explore into the self in more detail we will explore the needs of the self and how these needs are fulfilled in chapter 7 we will explore the needs of the body and their fulfillment the fulfillment of the needs of the self and the needs of the body ensures the harmony in the human being that is a brief proposal of harmony in human being for your self-exploration.